everybody to receive two papers. And if you don't have a pen, if you still have the pen of this morning, repent and just after the service, give it back. If you don't have a pen, just lift up your hand and uh, you can receive a pen for tonight. We're gonna, you're going to write certain things down. So everybody, you need to have a pen and two pieces of paper with you. A pen and two pieces of paper. Great, great, great. Praise the Lord. You guys that stood up, 1 John 4.4 4 and Philippians 4.4. 4. Just remember that. 1 John 4.4 4 and Philippians 4.4. 4. <coughs> There's not 44 chapters in Philippians, but it's 4 verse 4. Okay. Good. The scripture, we can throw it. I'll say. <coughs> How lovely on the mountains are the feet of those that brings the good news, the good message. That are making sure that peace are hurt. That are bringing good tidings. That are calling out redemption that says to Zion, your God is king. Your God is king. <coughs> Lovely feet. Lovely feet. Lovely on the mountains if you understand how to bring such message to the people. But where you go, are your feet bringing trouble? Point number one. We're going to go quick hopefully tonight. Presentatives with feet. You are the one coming on the mountain. <clears throat> that means on a place that where you are visible and you are presenting this gospel with your feet lovely are the feet not lovely are the words not lovely are the intentions not lovely are your preaching not lovely are all these what 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 lovely are your feet why because it's the full you it's not that you give people some cheap words what you say is what you do what you give to them is what they get, and that's everything. And that you are representing Christ with your lifestyle, with your feet. Lovely when your feet enters the house of someone. When you feet, your feet enters their hearts. When your life enters somebody, your brother's and your sister's heart. When you are surrendering your heart to your husband or to your wife. Your husband to be, your wife to be. Lovely, that feet that come with the fullness that God has for him. Let's be lovely in our brothers' lives, lovely in our sisters' lives, lovely in our marriages, in our relationships. Amen? But that feet can bring lust. That feet can bring trouble. That feet can bring criticism. That feet can bring Compromise, that feet can bring anxiety, that feet can bring fear. And when that person enters the house, enters your life, there's a spirit dimension with them. It's amazing that somebody would not necessarily <coughs> tell somebody else that they have issues with someone. But when two people come together with issues, they are just united. They are just finding comfort. They are just finding this lacquer conversation without necessarily speaking critically about situations at that stage. The same with lust. The same with rejection. <clears throat> the same with pride. You with me? Swart zoek swart. Engels? Salt seeks salt. <coughs> okay, all of that. Great. Represent the gospel with your feet, with your walk. Remember our favorite scripture? You walk, talk, and your talk walks, and your walk talks longer than what your talk walks. Remember that one? 
Let's say it. <laughs> How did we say? Your walk talks. And your talk walks. But your walk talks longer than what your talk walks. Because your talk can be cheap. But your walk can talk a lot <laughs> to people. May God have mercy on us for this. Amen. Because either I will represent a falseness <clears throat> where people cannot trust me. Because what they see is not what they get. It's something else. May that not be true. Blessed are you and blessed are the people with you. When there's a genuineness coming from your heart. Number two. Proclaim reconciliation. You come with the good news. You're proclaiming reconciliation and forgiveness. <clears throat> not condemnation. You proclaim reconciliation. Wherever you go, you want to bring people together. You want people to reconcile with God. Amen. It will not be that you are working at a place, you are standing at a place, and the people are doing what they want, and they don't know God. You don't want to condemn them. You don't want to preach to them to, to stop their nonsense. No, no. You want their hearts with God and God's heart to be known to them. Because you have received the message of the ministry of reconciliation according to 2 Corinthians. Thank you. 2 Corinthians 5. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that's why you are blessed. Why you have happy feet and lovely feet where you go. Lovely is the place because you are there. Because God's heart will be known and the hearts will be drawn to God. And people will forgive one another. And hearts will be opened up to one another. And forgiveness will be able to flow. Because when you give forgiveness, you give opportunity. To forgive somebody is giving yourself opportunity and that person opportunity. But if there's issues in your heart, you have no opportunity to do something with God. No opportunity to see more of Him and to walk more with more of Him and to dream with Him and see that dream becoming a reality. But I need to release. I need to give forgiveness. I need to receive forgiveness. Amen. Number three. I'm there to declare peace, not enmity, like war. You declare peace. You come with authority in the place. Blessed are you and lovely feet you have when you can come in the place and declare God's peace. God's peace has to do more with intimate harmony, but also with the guidance of God. Intimate harmony, but also the guidance of God. When you come into that place and when you speak and when you present yourself and when you give yourself, you can bring peace in the situation. But it's not an emotional peace. Remember, it's not necessarily an emotional peace. My brother, my sisters, there were some prophets. They had no emotional peace. They proclaimed certain levels of peace and they were nearly stoned. Yeah, some of them were stoned. Because peace is from a place of, to say, reconciliation, but more of reconciliation, an intimate knowing of God and an intimate guidance. Was that what God has for them? So you need to proclaim God's will. You need to proclaim what God has for people. You need to proclaim how they can come in an intimate place with God. But intimacy is not cheap with God, even though it is for free. But it's not cheap. It is a place where you need to present your everything. Your everything. And this is what you proclaim. This is what you stand for. <clears throat> Amen? Lovely, lovely where you walk. So it is. Next one. Sorry, the second and the third one. You will proclaim condemnation if you yourself, your heart is not with God and God with you. Then your Christianity is dangerous. Because then you will bring condemnation on yourself or on others. First you will condemn yourself and you will get into a performance. And you will try to perform to do everything right. And that cycle can grow further and further in a wrong direction. And then you expect certain things of people but in, the, in, the, in a level of performance. And if somebody will expect something of you, you will crack up. Or somebody expects you to do something, you get easily offended. Or somebody wants you to do certain things and you have your rights that you stand on. Why and why not you will do it? 
why you walk not walking in a place where reconciliation and forgiveness is proclaimed in your life. But because you stand in condemnation, you need to be set free from condemnation so that you can proclaim reconciliation and declare peace, declare intimate knowing, intimate harmony between you and God. Because in that place of intimate harmony with God, you know His guidance. You know His guidance. You will not know all the plans that He has for you. You will not know and He don't want you to know. Because He wants your heart now. Publishes freedom. Bring the good tidings. Blessed are you and blessed are the others where you go with lovely feet on the mountains. Lovely feet over the ob obstacles. Lovely feet with authority. You come from a place of perspective. On the mountains, you look down into the situation. Lovely are you that come on the mountains. Lovely are you that you come from a place of perspective. From this place of authority as you stand on the mountains. And from the mountains, you come into the situation. Amen. Amen. You publish this freedom. Not addiction or slavery. What is published out there? What is published out there? In the magazines and this and the internet and the outer net and the YouTube and the MyTube and the what, what all the... What is published there? <clears throat> is it freedom or slavery? Is it a setup where you know everything is okay? We've talked about this, that you have the best movie and it's awesome, but it's still sex before marriage, you know. Tell me the movie. We're in the movie. The lady would say, sorry, I'm too precious. You cannot just take what you want. If you truly love me, you will wait for me until I say in marriage with my God. Yes. But no, I'm not cheap. And if some of you gave yourself in that cheap way, take God's forgiveness so that you can see his preciousness again. Amen? Okay. Publish this freedom. Let that man be free to know how to treat a lady. Free the man to know how to treat a lady. <coughs> because he treats you in a cheap way. By flirting into a place of intimacy, physical intimacy with you, uh uh, what's he gonna do when he marry you, marries you? Let him be able to stand in a place of he respects you and he respects the no. You will not touch what he can't afford because it was bought with a price by, by Christ and his blood. And he's your man. And until he, the man says, you can take that man also. That man will not just touch you. Huh? Ladies, I'm not cheap. Say that. I'm precious. Now you need to say that with attitude. I'm not cheap. I'm precious. Don't touch what you can't afford. <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> Remembers that, remember that, please. Otherwise, I stand with slavery in my life and I stand as a slave. Number five, explain redemption. It needs to be explained. <coughs> Lovely. When you come in a situation and you explain how people can find redemption, but through the place of self denial, not how to destroy themselves, where you see they are on a, on a road of destruction. No, this is not my place. You know, I mustn't preach to them. Okay, send them to hell. You're either going to give them that, the road to heaven. You're either going to give them a place of hell to receive redemption and to be saved. Or you're going to make sure that they are more enslaved to go to hell. No, but through evangelism, step by step, I will win their trust. How? By fake your Christianity. By not telling them the truth. Or by coming to a place of let them understand. Not first of all the wrong. 
but first of how the Father passionately loves them. But for that, you need to receive it yourself. We're going to talk for a few Sundays, I don't know when yet, about how to love yourself. I think I said that before. We're going to talk about how to love yourself so that you can love your neighbor, so that you can let the love flow. But in that place, how to love yourself with Father's heart. Not to love yourself with your own love, that selfish love that will destroy you, destroy you. But excellent, fantastic, lovely, if you can explain and understand redemption that you are free to receive his heart because he is love. If you love yourself with his heart because he is love. Amen. Amen. May that be true, that you have that capacity to love yourself as he also loves you. We will get into that another time. Number six. <clears throat> Expect change, not confusion. <clears throat> if you walk this road and you understand as a presentative coming with your life, there's reconciliation, forgiveness, there's peace, there's freedom, there's redemption, you will change. Expect change. It will be there. But so many times we expect things to happen and it doesn't happen. We are discouraged because these principles are not applied God is a practical God, you know. <clears throat> but with a lot of these principles, you must go and sit with God. Go and sit and say, God, speak to me about this redemption. Where I am allowing destruction in my life. Where I am allowing addiction. I'm addicted to my own opinion. Addiction is not, first of all, the smoke and the dope and all that things. I can be so addicted to my opinion, so addicted to my hurt, so addicted to my past, so addicted to my circumstances, so addicted to moan and groan. I can be so addicted to that. Publish freedom from your spirit. There's some news coming from your spirit. Breaking news, you know? Break all the bondages. Some breaking news from your spirit. Let it be there. Tomorrow and the next day, there's some breaking news. Amen. Amen. Expect change. You will grow from glory to glory. That means you will become more beautiful and more beautiful and more beautiful. Your life will become more beautiful every day. If you apply these principles, there will be more beauty, more of heaven coming in and through you. So it must be. So it will be. So by God's grace, if we choose that. Or there will be more confusion in your work, walk with God and you will understand things less. And you will get discouraged more and more. And your relationship's not working out or you don't see the clear, the destiny that God has for you. So just wara wara on. <clears throat> get these principles in line so that there's not more confusion in your life. But more clarity, clarity, clarity for a beautiful life. With simplicity. Number seven. Last one. Honor your God. Say to Zion, your God is king. That part of the verse. Honor your God forever or honor your flesh. <clears throat> but your flesh will bring destruction. Your flesh will bring all the things on top. Your flesh will bring the falseness, condemnation, the war, the enmity, the addiction, the slavery, the destruction, the confusion. All of that will come in your life and all of that will be there as long as you hold on to the flesh. You are your worst enemy if you don't surrender at the cross of Christ. God dealt, he dealt with the devil. You need to deal with your flesh. He has paved the way through the cross, that the devil cannot stop you. He cannot stop you from the way through the cross. He cannot because he's defeated. He's defeated. He cannot touch you as you go through the cross of Christ. Because the world has nothing on you, you have nothing on the world, if you understand that you are crucified with Christ. But you need to make sure that your flesh is crucified with Christ. Amen. <clears throat> because in, the, in this place then, a lot of things still not working for you. Just start simply by honoring God. 
honoring God. Honoring God. Because let's say in this week you've honored your flesh. You've honored a lot of rubbish. When you come in here, it's not for the kick of singing. But awesome, yes, let's enjoy it. We must enjoy it. <clears throat> because God enjoys it. Amen? So if he's excited about the song, you better be also. If it's all on you. But when you choose to honor God and you stand before the Lord and say, God, you will be my king forever. And this week you will have the final say because you are my king. But you are discouraged in that commitment because you made that commitment three, four times in this week and it didn't work. But you know where two or more agree in my name, so it will be for them. So now today you say, stand here and you sing that song. Nothing's going to hold me back. Huh? Nothing's going to hold me back. And you say that with the other hundred in agreement. Then is you lock in together with them and you push forward. You push back the enemy. You push back the enemy. Because it's not you alone. And you need to be here to say that with others in unity. To speak forth that specific words that the worship leader believed God said to him that must be sung. So that that words will be on the lips of the congregation. So that we as a church will push forward as a unity. Amen. Nothing is just by coincidence. It's not by coincidence that we just say, let's sing the song. Uh-uh. We push together in the spirit and we declare he will be my king. And he is my king. And this week I'm breaking through. Because there were 50, there were 100 agreeing with me that God is my king. They said amen when I said he's my king. They said it in the spirit because they said the same. Amen. amen. The walls of Jericho will fall. It's not one man trying to give a shout there. Just let some stone fall on him. No, but it was the whole nation. Amen. You with me? <clears throat> so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Lovely feet. You're going to go this week. We call it a treasure hunt. And you're going to find the treasure that God wants. You're going to have the clues. And now you look at me as if you have no clue. That's, that's okay. You have the clues of how to do a great thing for God. And you're going to see more of Him. So, there's seven points that you're going to write down as we're going to, we're going to pray. And then we're going to write down some points of what we believe God is saying for you to go and do. But everyone is like seven clues for a specific action that must take place. <clears throat> I said this morning... Like the time that I in Amsterdam had to go, and uh, God said, go to that road, turn to the right, go five streets further, turn to the left, go seven trees further, and the seventh tree, I stood at the tree, and I looked across the street, and there was the entrance, exact entrance of the church that was the only contact that we had in Holland to go to. And I just knew God had wanted to do something. And now God's going to guide you this week in that type of way. Let's cry about that. Okay. To guide you to specific people. And you will stand amazed at how his guidance will be true for you. And how his guidance will be true for you. So I, God says, go out this road. Um, what's the road? Uh, Stephen Mapepa. What's this road again? Walter Susulu. Walter Susulu. <laughs> Go out there and after the N1, the fourth road to the left, you, somewhere I can't remember, turn left and the, the fifth house to the right, go in there, encourage them. They are at the point of making a decision and it's the right decision. They must just stand by faith even though it doesn't matter the cost. And they were people just praying about a major investment in a specific place. I was going to say the place now. But, and they were praying and they were reaching out to God because the next day they had to say yes or no. 
And it's exciting, guys, if we can go in that way. Amen. We're going to have a place. Um, I wanted to do this in, uh, when I went to Australia about 14 years ago. And God gave me the vision that we must really go to Perth, where Ami and Iva is now. And I believe God's going to do something in Perth. And uh, I was walking around there, and you find this gazebos, the stalls with the, with the curtains that you go in. And this one has the crystal ball, and the other one has the cards, and the other one has the, the hand pams, and, and whatever. They have it. And then you sit there, and you pay something, and they look in your eyes or whatever. I didn't go, but all these rubbish. And I said, what about the prophetic tent? Where is the prophetic tent? Where is Elijah? <clears throat> Hello? And guys, I'm looking for the man that will go and do that. I'm looking for that man that will go and sit in the city center. I don't know if it will be there, but we must find a spot at the Buddhamark. We'll go and sit at the place. And I don't know what we will call it. God's voice for you. And they will come in. They will not pay for a prophetic word. But you will look. And uh, you can be freaky with some guys, you know. So that they repent before they get out of that tent, you know. <laughs> but you write a sentence with every, for like 10 weeks. And with every week you write also a verse or a chapter. And if there's anything that you can sell there for any piece of money is that you sell Bibles. You know, all these references you will find in this book. If you don't have one, you can buy one now. If they say, I have already a Bible, then it's okay. There's no finances involved with that. But you don't sell a prophecy. That's demonic. That's rubbish. I need someone to go and do that. Man, oh man. Why are you all quiet? <laughs> God will give us a man. I'm serious. God will give us a man. And we will have that tent and we will go and sit and it will be known. That place will be known. And uh, we will not turn God's arm for, for an answer. As you know, those who did 10 questions, this prophetic counseling <clears throat> that God has given us. But like this day words that God gave me about writing a word for every day. And this prophetic counseling that God gave me. This is something I believe God gave me. And there will be a voice crying out in the wilderness of the rubbish of out there. There will be a voice crying out, and I need the John that will eat the spring cans and the honey, and that will be there. Amen. Amen. Okay, so what are we going to do? You're going to become quiet, and um, what comes up in your mind, you're going to write it right now. You don't think about it, don't meditate with your brain, just tell your brain to shh. Okay? And then you just start to write. And it's going to be like, point number one going to be, for most it could be maybe like that, something like, pray five minutes. Or God could say, pray, pray 30 minutes. Or the first thing could be, get on the bus. Or get in the car, go three streets to the left. Or go to pick and pay. And the next point, sit in the car, pray for five minutes. <clears throat> Next point could be, look for a lady with two babies. Could be Angela. <laughs> then you are saved. Okay. Ask for her to pray for your sins. <laughs> no. Go to her, give an encouraging word. Are you with me? <clears throat> or it could be just walk down the street. Not alone. And you can do this two by two, even when you have your word. 
and pray for the people in, the, in that suburb. Write before the time, first one maybe, write 20 words on paper. Go down the street and with every post box, there's not a lot of post boxes these days, throw in a word with your name and number, with that one, and give it. Trust God that you throw in the right one at the right post box. You with me? Buy ten red roses. <clears throat> Walk down the street with somebody else. If you're a guy, with a lady. Or with another guy. Yeah, well, rather with another guy. Okay. And give a rose to ten ladies saying, God is saying you are precious. God just wants to give you this rose today and say to you, you are very precious and walk on. You don't have to speak anything further. It will take you five seconds. It will take you five seconds. <clears throat> By the time that you feel to blush or to feel uncomfortable, you're already finished. You with me? Some of the ladies, you can stop if two guys are with you. Let us see what potential are there for you. No. <laughs> Hier is een paar wat ons moet nou voor mannen krijgen. hoor. Kijk. Are you with me? Can we do that? Point one. Buy a box of quality streets. This is for the guys. Because the ladies will eat it up before they give it away. <coughs> okay. Go to a place. Write the scripture of taste and see that the Lord is good. And go and give it out there. I asked this morning, and I felt very discouraged, realizing that what, 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 by fact, I realized a lot of things, but by truth, I take something else. Remember a few years ago, I asked that um, you will take 20 bananas, and you will give it out to some people, and you say, you are, eat your banana, you are not a baboon, you are made in the image of God. Boom. And you give the banana, and you walk. Who gave bananas away? Let me see. One, two. One, two, three. Great. The rest of you believe that all those guys are a lot of baboons. Then God didn't create them. Okay, this we called first-hand manipulation. Okay. But I'm challenging you. Who, when they hear all the rubbish, publish freedom if they hear the rubbish in the school that you come from a baboon or an ape where where will they hear the truth not from you because you are so ashamed of the truth oh it's too much of your comfort zone to take three seconds and say that sentence be set free go out there make one or two of these things take some banana or take some i don't know whatever Go and say to someone that they believe they're not stupid. They're not like a baboon. They are made in the image of God. There's people out there that needs to hear it. Where 20 guys in bed will not tell them that. But only the man, the man, the man that created her. But if you at least can have the love of God to such an extent to go and tell that lady, there's a man that created you. He's the man. Don't be like a baboon. You're not a baboon. Eat your banana, but you're not a baboon. Come on, guys. Come on, please. What must I do to convince you to do that? I cannot pay you money to do that. <laughs> Tell me, what must I do to convince you to do that? Anybody? I'm trying. <laughs> Eat a banana. Okay, go and try it this week, please. I really ask you. Amen? Amen. <laughs> All right, we're going to start. We're going to write down these words. We're going to take like five minutes. <clears throat> And with that, I'm going to speak the whole time, 
and trust God for a prophetic sentence or a prophetic word, and then maybe the moment that you are stuck in what you must hear, what I say at that moment is maybe the word that you're supposed to write. You understand what I'm saying? Are you with me? And if you're saying, but I'm struggling to hear the voice of God. God says, my sheep knows my voice. The sheep are not sent on 74 courses before they know the voice of the shepherd. By faith, they start to hear his voice because he created you. In the place where you were created, you knew his voice because you were created in his heart. Amen. Amen. How do we say with that uh, here in Obey Bookie? Every man. I know that's a sheep. Every man knows the voice of his man. And every man knows the voice of her man. That's the biggest revelation. There's 100 sheep. And all hundred are saying, You've heard sheep before? Who? Just me. They all do that. Then all the ones with the long tails come. But that little one hears the right. And that hears the right. I stood there for, you know, how do they know? They, just, they all sound the same. God has placed it in you that you know the voice of the one who created you. You know the voice of the one who created you. So come on, step out in faith. What can you lose? Absolutely nothing. When you go now, no, with no religious demon spirit, but you just write that seven clues where you will go to two people. And if there's only three clues to get to someone, just make it one, two, three, and make number four and number, another one to be one, two, three for the second clue. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, there we go. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you guide us now in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I pray that these guys will know how to find that treasure of that what you want to do this week. I pray that they will live beyond themselves. They will not be self-focused in the name of Jesus. I pray... For no fear, no uh, performance to, uh, of any rubbish voice telling them, oh, but what if he's wrong? Lord, I pray that they will step out in faith, all these children of God, and that they will go and find the treasure and see what you want to do this week in the name of Jesus, as you guide them by your Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to speak forth, and even if you just write their scripture at some stage where you will share a scripture with someone, then you do that. We give five or a little bit more, some minutes to you. Hallelujah. Go to the okay. Pray 10 minutes. Stand at that house. Lady with a red shirt. Just start to re write by faith. Just start to write by faith. Go with your car to that suburb. Stand and pray for the school. Go to Second Avenue. Talk about his love. Give hundred rand away. Write twenty cards. Nehemiah ten. Sell it to them. <coughs> Pray for two old ladies.
encourage that family. Sing a song unto the Lord at that place. Give them five words. Give two soccer balls away. Write that letter to that guy. Deal with religion. Give testimony about your life. Walk into four shops and encourage them. Pray a blessing over the family. Give that flowers away. Give that bread. Encourage them and you will be encouraged. Help them with their finances. Go to the spa. And encourage the family. Make coffee for that four students. Share a word. Surprise them with supper. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will guide each one here right now, also for the last three minutes. In Jesus' name, to arrest their focus, to put their discipline on them, to, to hear accurately from you, but to step out in faith. Pray in half an hour. Give it away. Buy 30 pains and give it away. <clears throat> Give that fruit away. Enjoy the people. Encouraged with a mother with her child. Tell them to honor authority. Give 27 letters away.
walk and greet people. Ten pieces. Give cupcakes away. Tell them God wants a feast with them. Sing a song to the Lord under that tree. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Will you take some extra time with God? I challenge you, I dare you to go. As uh, the King of Kings said, therefore go and make disciples. Therefore go. Tell your neighbor, go. Smack him and say, go. <clears throat> Wednesday, if you struggle, Wednesday, let them pray for you to hear God's voice also accurately. Amen. And then work it out. Testify Wednesday in the cell or help one another in the cell. Or say to someone, if you need somebody to go with you, say, please come with me. And maybe some of the clues you didn't find now. It doesn't mean this is the only five clues. You know, you come into that place. You come into that place. And you sit there and you pray and God is just showing you some extra things. Amen. I'm serious about the 20 or 30 pens. Go and get some pens and give it to people and say, God is wanting to write you a love letter. Or God wants to write on the tablets of your heart. You with me? Or go and write God a letter. He will hear you. Amen. Let's surrender our hearts. Let's stand.